Martin says, what is the major item I should focus on in 853? Rev 7 compared to 4. So the biggest difference, Martin, between Rev 5 and Rev 4, from my understanding, from what I've gathered, um, working with the government, working with private sector is privacy. They treat privacy a little bit different. In Rev 4, for the most part, it's mostly the same. There's a couple withdrawals and then they merged a couple of, they will, they'll will withdraw like SC3 and then they'll merge it with SR5, R, uh, RA5 or something like that. They've been doing a lot of that kind of stuff. That was just an example off the top of my head. I don't know if that's the actual case, <laughs> but the biggest change is the biggest focus, the biggest alter uh, will be a couple things. Number one, they changed the risk management framework, actually added one more step, which is prep, prepare, which we already do anyway. So that's, you don't have to worry about that. And that's not in 853, that's in 837. The biggest thing is privacy. So the way they treat privacy is different. Like privacy is now integrated throughout the entire document. And whereas before in Rev 4, what they did was it had its own section, which I think that they're trying to lean forward with privacy. And let me show you, for those of you guys that don't know, I, I've talked about this before about privacy, but I want to show you a really good research that's at a resource that's on DHS's site on privacy. They've got a really good breakdown of how privacy work. And this will walk you through what you really need to know for risk for 853. Because what you'll notice is 853 privacy is throughout the whole document. Even the name of the whole document added privacy in the very title of the of it. And from beginning to end, they integrated throughout the whole thing. Like it's in every, it's more, not every security control family, but many. And I'm going to show you that in a second. But right now I want to show you like, one of the best tools for breaking down privacy as a whole by itself. And this will help you out with NIST as well. Okay, so if you go to what I did was I just typed in, went to search engine, I typed in DHS space privacy, and it takes you to this page right here. And what I'm looking for is compliance. I believe this is where they have it. This is it right here. Check this out. This is a breakdown of what you really need to know for privacy. And then I'll walk you through like another item that I'm talking about for privacy. But Privacy overall as an ISO, as a security compliance person, or as an information security officer, information security professional, pri this is what you need to know. You'll do a threshold analysis, which determines whether or not an, a system has and what types of privacy, PII, which is, help me out here, guys, what's PII? <laughs> Personally identifiable information. It'll determine whether or not you have PII on that particular system. Number one, that's threshold analysis. And threshold analysis, if you didn't know, all it is privacy threshold analysis, all it is breaking down exactly what it asks like several questions to determine whether or not you have PII on that system. That's all it is. It's pretty basic. Yeah, personally identifiable information. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> I had a brain fart there for a second. Okay. So then once you know that this system A, for example, has PII on it and system B does not. And system P, system C, let's say, has some, but it's a different type. You'll go to a privacy impact analysis for system A and system C, the two systems with PII on them. And then those ones, what you'll do here is determine what types of secure PII do you have on the systems? Do you have social security numbers? How long do you keep those security numbers? Do you have a date of birth? Do you have all kinds of PI, what kind do you have? And at what level of protection do we need to use for that system? That's what the privacy impact analysis is going to do. What is the impact to our organization because this system has PII on it? And then the other one is a system of record notice. Or, and this one isn't, this. you don't have to do this for every system. This is for organizations that have a publicly facing system where it's collecting users information and they have to put like a public notice saying, Hey, we're collecting your information. Here's what we're doing with your per personally identifiable information. And Oh, by the way, if you want to change something, if you want to fix something, here's how to contact us. It's like a notice to the public saying, here's what we're doing. And here's how you can, here's what you, how you can interact with your own information. So that these are the main steps that you're going to do for any kind of privacy information. Now, let me show you in the actual NIST 800, what I'm talking about when I say it's integrated throughout the whole document. Let me actually find the resource that you need to go through. And if you want to follow along, I'm on the search engine and I'm typing NIST security 
controls and i don't know if you guys will have to see the same thing i'm seeing here but what i'm doing is looking for all the control families here so all i did was type in this to security controls it's going to take you to one of the top search results is going to be c csrc dot nist dot gov and i'm in rev i'm c rev 5 for 800-53 i'm looking for they've got a really great breakdown that's on the website itself that i'm looking for i really prefer that one to the actual document i can use the document but there's a better one that i, that I like to use man what is that site let me see if i can find it directly from here Actually, I think I have it linked here. Let me see. Framework. Nope, that's not it. Let me see if it's this one. Bear with me, guys. I'm trying to find the actual site that has a, a breakdown of it. Here it is right here. This is on the rc.nist.gov website. This is a government site. For you, guys, for you guys who are watching who don't know what the hell is going on, what is Bruce doing? I don't understand what I'm looking at. <laughs> what is happening here? So... What, let me just take a few minutes, Martin, to explain what we're going. Let's catch everybody up to speed here. I got other people watching who might be interested in learning a little bit more about security compliance. So security compliance is what organizations use to protect your information. So they want to protect the confidentiality of your information, the integrity of your information, and the availability of your information. That's information security in a nutshell. That's all you're doing. So my job as a compliance person is to make sure that the organization is doing that effectively. Now, in order for me to do that, I do have to know a little bit about IT. Like I can't just come in off the street and know nothing. Not even a, jan a janitor even has to know what mixes to use to, to get certain stains out of a carpet. You know what I'm saying? So there's, cert there's a certain level of knowledge that you have to do this kind of stuff. But that being said, you can get this knowledge. It's, it's not inaccessible to to anyone, a anybody can get this information, okay? What we're looking at here is the federal standard. This is something that everybody has to go, is benefiting from, I should say. If you've ever gone to the DM DMV and you're trying to renew your license, if you've ever gone to, to Target to swipe your card, Walmart to swipe your card, if you've gone to a bank, if you've gone to a healthcare, if you've, you've gone to a hospital, every organization uses some level of security compliance. Now they may have different frameworks for security compliance but they're all using security compliance of some sort because they need to use security best practices and that's what this whole thing is all about so what you're looking at here on my screen is the federal uh and this is all free information it's free game right here you can follow along with exactly what i'm doing here but this right here is the federal standards that has all the security control families which addresses each one of the security the best security practices to protect your organization whenever you hear about some of those hacks out there in the real world whenever you hear about oh this organization got hacked or this organization has some sort of ransomware or the hacker got away with a million dollars and stuff like and more than likely the organization was not doing one or more of these security control families now what martin is asking me is how does privacy where does privacy come into play so his exact question was what are the major items i should look for in this right here in, in this set of security controls which is all which is known as 800-53 rev revision 5 because they went from four revision recently revision four to re revision five and that's what you're looking at right here as a matter of fact if you go to this website right here this has the most anything that they update will go here in sp 853b because this has stuff that the actual document that they released months ago, a year ago it has stuff that doesn't that's not even in the document so it's very updated anyway so let me show you what we're talking about they what they did with revision five and you can see here they have 5.1 but what they've done with this one is they integrated privacy controls throughout each one so if, you, if i choose any one of these they'll typically have some breakdown of whether or not this control, for example, let's say it controls is for audit audit logs. Like whenever an organization is, whenever somebody logs in, is tracking whoever's logging into that federal system. That's very important to protect your information because you want to know who is touching that system. So if you look in here, you can see that they've integrated security controls throughout the whole document, which is a big difference between this standard, this revision, and the previous 
that that's one of the biggest ones. There's other changes, but you said the main focus, and I would say the main thing would be privacy. Now we already talked about privacy threshold analysis and privacy impact assessments and the SORN. Those are the main things that you, as a security compliance person, needs to, to do. Like those are the main things that you are gonna have to do. But if you want to go into detail, if you want, if you're actually in this field and you're doing this on a regular basis, this is the stuff you need to know as far as the biggest difference. So that, so Martin, I hope that answers your question. It, you can find the same stuff in the NIST 853. It, it'll have each one will have a breakdown of what you do, the interpretation of the control on kind of stuff. But then on the side, you'll see privacy. It says, okay, how do you deal with privacy in AU? AU2, AU3. And so you can see here that not all of those are applicable to privacy. There's only a couple here that are applicable to privacy. Now, if you're interested in going a little bit deeper in this, if you're new to NIST 800, if you're new to all this stuff, I've got a book about this. I got to pay some bills real quick. So you'll excuse my desperate attempts at having sales. <laughs> but I've got a book that breaks down everything that you need to know. And it also includes privacy. There's a section on privacy for each one of the control families. I don't go through, this book is light. It's light, it's, it keeps, it goes straight to the point. And it goes into each family, not every control, because there's over a thousand controls. It goes to each family and it actually addresses privacy in each one, all the ones that are relevant. So if you're interested in that, it's on Audible. You can actually read it or you can listen to it. It's about a three hour listen. You can listen to it while you're in your car, while you're driving, and all that kind of stuff. Or you can read it. If you're a reader, you can actually order the book. I actually have hard copies of the book. If you're interested in here it is right here. You can order that. And I've got more books in that series coming out. So if you're interested in that. But if you're not, hey, I just gave you some free game. And I told you a bunch of free resources that you can go interpret it yourself.